this is what's included in the standard kit with the reverse osmosis systems. But for this video, what we're actually going to be installing is the way we like to have our systems here at Filter Shop uh, kitted out with a few upgrade options that makes it perform much better than the standard unit and with ex an extra tank to have a much bigger buffer of water for if we want to fill external bottles. First we install the permeate pump which is a, gives the unit a, a much better efficiency than the standard system as well as giving you a higher pressure in the storage tank and allowing you to store more water. This is how you'd connect it up. Then we install the membrane. You first disconnect the nut at the end, open the housing, the housing can clip off, and apply some Vaseline to all the seal surfaces. The specific membrane we're installing here is the nanofiltration membrane. Then close the housing again and make sure to tighten um, the the nut with the supply pipe. Then we install the filters. Again, any of the sealed surfaces, it's a good idea to add some Vaseline to as well as a little bit on the thread. This just makes it much easier when time comes to changing changing the filters to actually get the housings loose. Um, this specific set has two KDFs in. Yours may, may vary. It depends on which unit and which options you go for. Then you can use a little bit of PTFE thread sealing tape to just um, place the valve on the tank. And this is one of the few places where you do actually need to apply some tape for a seal as the, it doesn't come with a built-in seal. Next, you need to plan out your installation. We have a hole in the counter here, but it's too far away. Unfortunately here, we've um, got enough space for two tanks and the system. We've got an easily accessible half inch flexible hose connection, and we've got a drain pipe pipe nice and easily reachable there, and everything fits in the cupboard nice and easy. Make sure you have the 13 and the 14 spanner. Make sure all the little bits are there for the tap. The counter would go in between those bits there. Make sure you have everything, including the little ferrule connected inside of the supply pipe. Then for your supply connector, place a thread sealing tape on the valve and screw it into the half inch or three quarter inch connection. And uh, then you can fit it under the counter. Once you have your valve fitted, make sure to place the pressure protection valve in on the line as it will protect from pressure spikes. For this specific system, we are connecting up two tanks. So we have an extra Y joint and we have a T joint there with a, with a long piece of pipe and a valve to be able to fill the fridge. Then for the drain connection, drill a six millimeter hole, place the pipe through the hole and secure it with tape. Here we have a marble top which we had to drill for this installation, so we needed a, a few things to drill the hole. But this is basically all we needed. First we needed some tape to secure it, some press stick to keep the water in, in place, and then a very importantly a diamond tipped drill which is a core drill, and um, a, a battery drill to start with and a normal drill, but that's not needed. So first things first, we need to decide where we actually want to place the tap. So put it together, have a look, see where it's going to to fit in and what would be where you actually would want the tap and then have a look underneath. It's very important to make sure that you've actually got enough space to place the fitting and that where you start drilling the hole, you'll be able to secure it. It's very important that you keep everything very cool. That's why you'll see we use plenty of water here and um, we ended up going through two batteries on the battery drill and switching over to a large electrical drill once the hole was um, seated properly. This can take a long time depending on the material you're drilling through. The specific hole, the specific material is is some sort of a mixture of, with resin in and it's extremely hard. We ended up taking an hour to drill the hole. If you j have uh, the option of just placing it in the zinc, that's much easier and much quicker. Um, or drilling through a um, mobilite or a wooden counter is, is much quicker. 
but um, here's how we drilled this hole. And at the end, we ended up with a very nice, nice hole and um, no damage to the counter whatsoever. It is one of the areas in the installation, especially if you have got a hard countertop like we're showing here, where a lot of people prefer to get an external person out, even if it is just to drill the hole, because it, it, it does come with a risk of actually damaging the counter. But um, we, we feel it is, it, it is something which you need to consider. If you're comfortable with doing it yourself, it, the risk isn't that big, but there is definitely a risk to take into to consideration. Um, once you're through the counter though, you'll get a little bit of water going through into the bottom, but not too much. And as you can see, that is the bit of hard material that's come out after drilling the hole. And then we can actually check and make sure that our, our tap fits and that it's in the correct location. Then you can fasten it from underneath, make sure the thread is clear, put all the bits together, the rubber, the plastic, the little metal bit, and then the nut, tighten it with, with the spanner. Then you can connect up all the pipes, that the, is the product water pipe connected to the bottom of our tap. Then uh, you have then you have your pipe connected to the tanks on the other side. In our case, it's split between the hose and the two tanks. And make sure the tank valves are closed at the top there. Make sure the valve for the hose, if you add something like that, is closed. And then there you would connect your source water connection from um, the, the fitting we added up there. And then the, finally your drain connection connects on the line which is connected to the flow restrictor at the back there, in our case. It is just running through the permeate pump to get there. Then open the water supply and check all your piping for leaks. Make sure there, there isn't anywhere where there's in, any leaks. If there is, first close the water supply and fix them. Make sure to check um, in between everything in a lot of detail just in case there's something there. The system will start running running now. O open the tap and make sure the tanks are closed and then let, let the system flush for a while. This specific unit has a permeate pump so that the water comes through and pulses. After it's flushed for a little while, close the, the, the tap, let it build up pressure and then um, you can open the, the, the tanks after a while and just um, let them fill up completely first and then empty your first batch of um, water until the tanks are empty and then you can close the taps and let it let it run again until it is full. Just double check that you don't have any leaks now and then you can move everything into the cupboard and then your installation is, is finished and uh, hope you enjoy having great filtered water.